How's it going everybody? My name is Sasha Green. I'm a filmmaker and a visual effects artist. Today we're going to be taking a look at the plugin inside of DaVinci Resolve called Dehancer Pro. If you're not familiar with what that plugin is, it's a film emulation plugin that lets you convert your digital footage to make it then look like it has film characteristics. I did get asked by Dehancer to do a review and so that's what we're going to be doing today. Although I said yes, they did want me to do an honest review on their product. This is straight up just my opinion on what I think about their product. So if you guys are actually interested in wanting to get this plugin for yourself, go ahead and use my promo code SashaGreen10 to get 10% off of any purchase that is on their website when you're checking out. Definitely will just help lessen the dent in the bank account. And it's also just a nice way to show your support towards the channel. You know, a question you might have is, why would you want this plugin? Is it really worth it? To answer that, I would say, you know, shooting on film is, is challenging and it's not the most practical way of filming. And it's also just, it takes a lot of time and uh, it's just harder, you know, just plain and simple, it's just harder. Stranger Things is one of those TV shows that comes to mind when talking about this technique of shooting with digital cameras and then converting it to make it look like it has film characteristics. I think that's just such a good example of it being done so well. It's so nice how we can get the luxurious style of filming when we're using digital cameras, but then still being able to get all those characteristics that we love with film. Fun fact, they actually do film Stranger Things in Atlanta, Georgia. We went to that same town and we got this footage. With all that being said, let's get started. So originally I did shoot in 6K, but I'm gonna actually be just working in a 4K timeline because I think that's enough for what we need. We're gonna also be working in DaVinci Wide Gamut to get the most out of our colors with our camera. So we have this shot, super simple. We just have our character walking down the alleyway. I think I'm gonna go for a Stranger Things kind of vibe. First thing I like to do is go up to the output blinking and change that to like 2.0. So that'll give us a similar aspect ratio that the Stranger Things show was using. And then right here, I'm just setting up my nodes and they recommend to put the Dehancer plugin on the last node of your node tree. And then everything before it, you can make your major adjustments like your white balance or your masks or noise reduction. And then if you wanna add a node after the plugin, you could use that for like sharpening. And uh, this first node, I'm just gonna make this my noise reduction node. So I'm just looking at the image to see how noisy it is. I shot this on the Pocket 6K, the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So automatically that camera does come with like a lot of noise because it doesn't have like a, a built-in noise reduction system inside the camera. So we're gonna have to do that in resolve. I was super satisfied with the results. Like look at that before and after cleaned up really well. So now that our image is cleaned up, we are setting ourselves up for success in the future because you want to make sure you're working with a clean image right off the bat. So then our end result can look best as possible. So now we're ready to go ahead and actually start adding the Dehancer Pro plugin and already you can see what it's doing to our image. Super cool. It's giving us a look. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down all the way to where it says the quality options, and I'm gonna make sure that's on normal dash fast. And then we can go ahead and check for updates to see if the plugin has been updated. So we're not missing out on any new features. We can also disable all of the effects of the actual plugin. So if you wanna work with just a blank canvas right off the bat, you can, and then just start slowly building up all of the effects that come with the plugin. But for me, I'm gonna just have most of the effects enabled so we can just tweak as we go. All right, so now we can scroll all the way back up to where it says input. And this is where we're just kind of making sure the plugin knows what kind of camera we use. So we get the most out of using this plugin with our footage. And already you can see our image is already looking really nice. We can get right into it and just scroll down to where it says film. And where it says profile, we can open up this list. And this is where we have all the emulated film stocks to choose from. I mean, the list goes on, it's crazy. You just have so many options. Um, here, I'm just testing out the Fujifilm Instax as an example of you know what that one looks like. But I think today we're gonna go with the Kodak Vision 3 250D. 
if you guys aren't aware of what the T and D stand for at the end of the film stock, the D is just standing for daylight balance and then the T is just tungsten balance. So usually if you're shooting outside, you wanna use daylight balance. And then if you're shooting anywhere that's like more low lit, or if it's inside, you might wanna go with the tungsten balance film stock. And then right underneath our film stocks, we have this feature where we can push and pull our film stock, emulating what it's like to expose our film stock. If you think about when you are exposing film, not only is your image gonna get darker, but your colors inside your image are also gonna shift and change. Yeah, I mean, the push and pull bar is definitely super cool to have within this plugin, just that amount of control. I feel like it's also just helping the accuracy of the overall film stock. And you know, that's kind of the cool thing about this plugin is that not only is it a film emulation plugin, but the way you go about doing things inside this plugin is really unique. It's actually trying to like emulate what it's really like when processing real film. So you're going through all the steps and stages, kind of like how you would if you were to actually do the real process of shooting with film. Keep that in mind, it is actually a little bit different from your normal color grading process and it is something to get used to, but once you're used to it, it's really cool. So next thing I like to do is just come right down to where the expand tab is and this is where we can start to set our contrasts. And you'll notice that there's a lot of different places inside this plugin where you can set your contrasts but there's just different ways of doing it and it's gonna give you different results. So the next thing I like to do is come up to the film developer tab and start to add some color boost. Really like what that's doing to the image. So now that we got our color boost dialed in there, I like to come down to the print and use the Kodak 2383 print film. I thought that looked really nice with this shot right here. And already you can kind of see the amount of contrast that it puts on our image is a little too much. So I like to kind of dial that back with the tonal contrast bar and then setting our exposure back to a more darker vibe. I really like how the Kodak 2383 print film looks. It's definitely pushing our image in the right direction. All right, so I definitely have to say that one of the coolest things about this plugin has definitely got to be the film grain that comes with it. It's insane. Like... Usually you might just get some film grain and slap it on your footage and call it a day, but I'm telling you that is not a good way about doing it because it's not really an accurate way of adding film grain to your footage. Your footage, when you're actually shooting with film, is going to dictate how your film grain is going to look because it's being driven from your actual footage. When you just slap on an overlay of film grain on your footage, it's just not as accurate. I think a lot of people don't really pay attention to what kind of film grain they're adding to their footage. You know, they might just see film grain and then just add it to their footage, but that film grain could be, you know, inspired from 8mm film or 16mm film or 35 and you just don't really know exactly what you're getting sometimes when you're just like slapping on film grain. All right, so let's go ahead and check out some of this film grain we have here down at this film grain tab. We got 35 millimeter ISO 250 right now and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll probably start to notice that if you move around your image, you'll see how dynamic this film grain is. It's actually using your footage to drive what the film grain is gonna look like and is giving just a more overall accurate result when it comes to the look of our film grain when we're using our digital footage. Yeah, definitely one of the coolest things about this plugin is gonna be the film grain for sure, for sure. Okay, moving on, we got Bloom. And this is really nice to just have. So you can kind of see what that's doing here with our footage. It's adding a really nice overall diffusion to the contrasty parts of our image, almost as if you were using like a Promis filter or something like that. So you can mess around with the settings there. All right, so now that we've got our bloom set, I kind of wanted to just address this overall reddish tint color on our image. You'll see that there's just a lot of it everywhere on the walls. And the way I kind of addressed the overall balance with our colors in the image was just to head over to the color head panel and just start to mess with all the different controls we have here. You'll see if we start to crank up the cyan and red bar, if we pull it in one direction, it starts to add more red tones. 
and then if we pull it in the cyan direction we'll start to get more cyan colors so we can really start to get rid of some of that red tint that we don't want in our image and again we just have so much more control when it comes to using this we can really start to dial in where this is being affected you know if we want to introduce more of this in our shadows or in our highlights or midtones it's another just really nice way to control the colors in our image all right so now that we've balanced out our image i actually wanted to come up here to the print tab and just crank up the color density and with really cranking up the color density we start to get some really nice rich deep colors okay cool so the next thing i wanted to do was actually come up to the film compression panel when shooting with film film has a really high dynamic range when it comes to the highlights of your image and so what this film compression tool does essentially is it's allowing you to have more precise precision when it comes to bringing down the brighter parts of your image it's not giving you extra dynamic range you are still going to have to rely on your camera's dynamic range but it's just another great tool to really have more precision when it comes to bringing back some of the highlights. So you can really see how we're able to control our highlights and still maintain the same overall brightness of our actor's face here. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna actually do in this plugin, the last effect we're gonna be using is gonna be the gate weave. If you're not really familiar with what gate weave is, it's essentially an effect that happens when you're actually shooting film. The film inside the camera is gonna wobble a little bit and it's gonna adjust the framing of your shot ever so slightly. So it's just gonna add some slight wiggle to your frame, if that makes sense. And you can also, again, customize that to have even more control if you really want to dive deeper into that effect. Um, again, having that flexibility within the plugin within that specific effect is always nice to have. So once I really like how everything is looking and I'm done with grading the footage, I'll scroll all the way back down to the options tab where it says the quality. I'll switch that from normal dash fast to then high dash slow. You don't really need to mess with these settings, but if you want to, you can. It's just kind of suggested to do them elsewhere, like adjust your exposure elsewhere in the plugin or somewhere else in DaVinci Resolve. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now that we've wrapped up everything with the Dehancer plugin, we then can go back to our three previous nodes that we set up. And now we can make adjustments like, you know, our skin tones. I think with the overall look we got with the Dehancer plugin is fantastic, but I do think it left our skin tones looking a little pale. So for the kind of look I'm going for, I'd like it if she, our character had a little more I don't know warmth so right here you can see i'm just using the vector scope to really dial in where my skin tones are landing on the skin tone indicator line just starting to push some warmer colors into the face here and bring back some of that life you know what i'm saying all right so now that we've got our skin tones where we want them to be they're looking way better last thing i just did was just to track this mask onto our face throughout the shot because you can see if we don't track it, it's not gonna follow her face and that's something we need. All right, so now that we've got everything done with that, let's take a closer look at what we did. You can see a little before and after on her face. It's just warming up her face area really nicely, bringing back some of the skin tone colors. And there you have it. That's pretty much all I did. Super simple, super fast too. It didn't take me long to whip up that look. So I can definitely say it did take me some time to get used to using this plugin because it's just a different way of developing a look, if, if that makes sense. But once I got used to it, it's super fast and efficient and it's just, it's such a good tool for someone like me. And so to have this tool, to be able to just whip up certain kind of looks that I'm trying to achieve so easily in a very timely manner, I think it's just awesome to have. So this plugin is going to run you about 450 US dollars. I really, really appreciate how this plugin is not subscription based and it is a one time payment. This plugin was made for film emulation and it does such a good 
job at it. Also, the customer support with this product has been really good so far. So I guess I do have some things that could be considered cons. You know, the first one is gonna be, I don't think that this plugin is the most user friendly. It's a little tricky, you know, to get used to the workflow that comes with this plugin. And so I don't think it is made for everybody, but I think it also doesn't have to be made for everybody. Another thing I was thinking was, I don't know if it would be possible, but if there was just a way to maybe organize everything inside the plugin a little better, I don't know what that would be, but I don't know. I was just thinking there's gotta be maybe a, a smoother way to get through everything that's inside the plugin that kind of made it easier to find whatever you're looking for. I don't know. So one thing that actually did really annoy me with this plugin was the enable checkboxes under each effect. I'm not a big fan of that at all. If it were me, I'd just get rid of it and I would just have those effects just be automatically ready to be active. I think they just get in the way of things, you know? It's like you're in the flow, you're being creative and you're about to start adjusting these settings and nothing happens and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot to check the checkbox. Like, that's annoying, dude. Like, I don't want to have to do that every time. I want to just expect that this effect is going to work right off the bat, like how most other things are in DaVinci Resolve, you know? So that's just my opinion on it. Might not bother you, but definitely had me pissed off a little bit. But uh, with there being some annoyances about this plugin, is it worth still getting? Yeah, this plugin is sick. I think definitely still worth getting. All right, so those are my thoughts. Um, let me know if you have any questions or what you think about this plugin. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Leave a comment down below if you have anything you wanna talk about or just share your thoughts on this video or whatever, you know, say whatever you want. I'll check you guys out in the next video. Peace out.